Hi, I'm Julia. Over the past 10 years or so of working as a journalist, I've sort of gone back and forth between freelancing and working in different newsrooms and magazines and stuff. And there are pros and cons of both. Uh, people are both pros and cons. Uh, having to wear pants is a con. Uh, cats at home, mostly a pro, sometimes a con when they whine or right now when they're trying to eat something in here. Sleeping in is a pro and so on. Uh, so this week I started a new job and to celebrate that I thought that I would give you some tips on working from home, working for yourself, that kind of thing. There are definitely different ways of working from home. Uh, some people still work for a company, they just do it from home. Uh, some people are their own bosses and they do mostly stuff at home or mostly stuff out of the house. Maybe you're a consultant or you do different kinds of appearances. Maybe you write stuff. Maybe you make stuff. Maybe you, I don't know, maybe you want to be a YouTuber. Maybe you spend part of your time in a coffee shop or some kind of studio space. You know, so this is partly working from home and partly working for yourself or on your own. Maybe not everything will apply to you or maybe it won't work for you, but if you try it or think a little bit about it, at least you'll know why you think I'm wrong and then you'll know what does work for you. Side note, if you do work in a coffee shop and you use their Wi-Fi, make sure that you use a VPN or something to make sure that your computer and your stuff are secure. So first off is kind of both a disclaimer and a truth. What works for you is what works for you. These are things that work for me and that work for a lot of other people, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's how you work. And anything that gets the job done and doesn't leave you too tired and anxious and stressed is a good way. Second, get in the mood. I don't think that you have to get properly dressed or like, you know, put on makeup or real shoes to do work. Like I said, no pants is a freelance bonus, but it is good to sort of trigger a work mode in yourself. So maybe you change from sleeping sweats into daytime sweats, or maybe you have an office. If you don't have an office, maybe you switch to a different table or you use a special mug or something like that. Just let your brain know that now it's work time. If you're working at a computer, you know, you're doing the same things when you're goofing off as when you're really working. Uh, but if you do try to sort of create that space around what is real work time, uh, it's easier to get your brain working right. Three is schedules and lists. I am all about lists. I really like my bullet journal, but whatever works for you is good. But you should set up both short-term lists, maybe for the day, and longer-term lists, you know, either big goals or stuff that has specific deadlines and stuff. What really made a huge difference was when I realized that I need not just to-do lists, but some days I need a very specific schedule, like hour by hour, sometimes even breaking it down by 15 minutes. So like 10 to 11 is emails, 11 to 12 is writing, 12 is lunch, and then I make sure that I set off maybe half an hour or an hour for lunch, even if, you know, microwaving something and eating it will only take eight minutes. And you do have to make sure to schedule breaks in there, even if it's just like five or seven minutes to get up, move around, do something else because uh, it's really easy to just like set this hard schedule for yourself uh, and then you're stressing out and you're just gonna skip it altogether. I do try to give myself a little extra time, a little more time than I need for most tasks because then I can either take a break right away or skip to the next thing on the list because it's totally fine to uh, be ready ahead of schedule. You just don't wanna always feel like you don't have enough time for each thing you're doing. Another bonus of making a schedule uh, where you set aside specific slots of time for different tasks is that it also makes it really easy to see if you have way more stuff to do than is reasonable because then you'll have to figure out some other way to make that work, either to rearrange your week or uh, look at how you're planning. You will get better at figuring out how much time different tasks take. So uh, in the beginning, your schedule may be total chaos, but then you'll know that these types of emails will take 10 minutes and this type of email will take an hour because I'll have to get a lot of numbers or facts together or whatever. And you'll know that uh, editing this type of podcasts take this long, you know, that kind of thing. But don't feel silly about, you know, writing out your day by 30 minute increments uh, because uh, we're very simple creatures and generally we don't want to do stuff. And I find that when I have a specific set time for something, like 
at this time, I'll start doing this and then I will do it for 30 minutes. I am more effective than if I just go, okay, I need to start doing this right now because then I'll just sort of uh, put it off for way longer than I should. Sometimes I do this even on like less structured days. I'll uh, look at the clock and be like, okay, so it's 11.10. At 11.15, I have to start doing this thing and then I'll do it until 11.45 and then I'll just... I'll have a deadline to start and I'll have a deadline to stop. And that's actually also a really important thing, uh, not just breaks, but try to end your workday. And if you live alone, this can be even harder. I know that for me, uh, it, maybe it sounds sad, but knowing that uh, my partner is coming home from work makes it easier to just decide, okay, I have to be finished by this time because I want to spend time with him, but also I want to relax and not just keep working because it's really easy to, especially when you like your work or when you're really stressed, but just decide that uh, working at night and late into the nights is the exception, not the rule. And fourth is factor in the boring admin stuff uh, in that list because it's usually not the most acute, so you may not have it in mind and you may not prioritize it, um, but all that stuff, emails, uh, bookkeeping, invoices, set aside time for them, even if it's just a little bit here and there, but maybe also set off time more often than you might like because then you can sort of do it a little at a time and then you won't have a big stressful pile of it all at once that'll just stress you out. Or if you're that kind of person, do it once a month. Maybe not emails, but you know what I mean? Like just make sure that you have time set aside for that so that you're not scrambling or stressed out by huge piles of, of the boring stuff. And five is rewards. Uh, I joked in my NaNoWriMo video, actually it wasn't a joke, it was true that sometimes I will like have a couple of like pieces of candy after a specific number of words, but you can also set time in your schedule for something that's fun, like um, watching some TV or watching some YouTube videos. And uh, you just have to make sure that you set off like, oh, I can watch one episode of something or I can watch 20 minutes of YouTube videos. Six is do stuff around the house. Uh, this is a, a different kind of break and that is to get other stuff done and it is very much about procrastinating and a lot of people do find that their house is never as clean as when they have a deadline um, but if you plan to do it if you do it on purpose you can make your laziness work for you so uh, if you feel like, okay, I don't want to do this right now, or I need a break, I need to give my brain a rest or give whatever it is, just not right now, uh, do something else. Because you'll feel less guilty and lazy if you take a 10 minute break from whatever it is you don't want to do right now. But at the end of that 10 minutes, the laundry is going or the dishes are done or something like that. The only thing is you have to pick one thing and do that thing and then get back to your work. You can't just like ignore your computer for a whole day and like very, very slowly water plants or something. Get back to the thing, but give yourself that intentional procrastination, that intentional break. Uh, also, it's good because you'll move around. You'll get up and not just sit still all day. Maybe you can do laundry hanging and stretching at the same time. I don't know seven, I'm feeling sillier and sillier about doing the numbers with my hands, but seven is it's okay to not be 100% productive. It's really easy to feel like a failure if you're not on the whole day, uh, regardless of whether you have enough work to fill that time or not. But what you have to remember is most jobs you are not on all day. Uh, maybe it's waiting for emails or you have meetings or you're getting coffee. Uh, or you're thinking about things. But when you're at home, you don't see those uh, things that affect your work in the same way. You feel like you should be doing stuff. And part of that, I think, is that you are way more comfortable at home. So uh, that time when in an office, maybe you'd be just sitting and trying to make sure nobody can see that you're just playing solitaire or reading Reddit and in your home you can go lie down on the couch and do something else or take a shower. So you are probably producing as much as someone in a normal job, uh, maybe more, it's just that you're doing it either in like two concentrated hours or in a couple of 15 minute spurts here and there some days. So th this isn't the same as it's okay to not get things done, it's okay to not 
um, check things off your list or to ignore your schedule. It's just that most jobs have that sort of ebb and flow of sometimes you're super busy, sometimes you're not. But when it's only you, it's easy to forget that that's normal. So some days you'll have tons to do. Your schedule will be totally packed. You'll only have room for five minute breaks. And some days you will have time for way more TV. And that doesn't mean that you're lazy as long as you feel like you're getting stuff done. If you feel that you're not, then you need to work on that. But the problem isn't necessarily that you're not doing stuff all the time, all day. If you were at your top, most creative, most productive for all the hours of the day, you would probably implode pretty quickly. So try to enjoy the fact that you will have different kinds of days. Enjoy the fact that you don't have to pretend to look busy when there's not much going on. You can take a walk, take a shower, pet a cat, uh, watch Grey's Anatomy, whatever. Eight? Eight? I don't know. Eight is get paid. And maybe this should be the number one tip, I don't know, but don't undervalue your work. Don't undersell yourself. Don't be grateful to someone for being kind enough to let you work for them or let you sell them things. You are awesome. And some days it'll be hard. Some days you will not be able to sell your work or do whatever it is you want to do. And it can feel tempting to uh, take any job or jump on any opportunity. And some days you will have to because you will have to pay bills. But remember that you are providing a service to someone or a good or whatever it is that you do and you shouldn't sell yourself cheaply. You should ask for what you deserve and if you can, you should ask for a little bit more. Uh, I had a friend who told me that when you're uh, negotiating for a salary for a job, you should ask for just enough that you feel kind of a little awkward about it. Uh, and you should always ask what someone wants to pay you. And you should always uh, assume that someone wants to pay you and they want to pay you fairly. And remember that exposure is not a thing. I mean, it's a thing, but it's a thing that people die from. Uh, and if someone wants to pay you an exposure, you should remind yourself and maybe remind them that they found you. So you are at least exposed enough that they were able to find you. So what can they really offer you? There are some exceptions to this. Generally, I think that the person who is doing the work is the one that should decide if it's free or not. The person who wants something from you is not the person to decide that you should do it for free. And number nine is drink tea. I will put this in any and all guides to anything I ever do. I like drinking out of my own mugs because I'm ridiculous, but I mean it both literally and figuratively. So drink tea in the sense that you should take breaks, that you should take care of yourself, that you should do things you like, but also literally make sure you eat and drink, that you take care of your body while you're working because most likely, regardless of whether you're making things or writing things or... Are those the two things maybe? Uh, you're probably stressing your body in different ways. So be nice to it. So drink tea, you're welcome. So those are nine tips for working from home or working for yourself. Actually, I think most of them probably work just as well when you're at a normal job, except the pants thing, wear pants to work. If you have any thoughts or questions or comments, leave them in the comments. If you want more videos like this on working from home, being productive, knowing your worth and getting paid, or maybe my top five teas for working, uh, let me know in the comments and subscribe, uh, like the bell, I don't know, do all the things that you want to do. Social media, any other links are in the description. And yeah, drink some tea, be nice to yourself, take a nap, and I'll see you later. Bye. Also, this sign, my husband made it for my birthday uh, to use for podcasting, but I realized that it's really cute here. Um, I cried when he gave it to me. He built it himself. Like it's 3D printed, laser cut, all that stuff. And so cute. But now I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to turn the sign off.